Hey everybody, thank you for joining. Um, I'm Bree from the Life at Humber team, and this is our We Got You Live series, a weekly series where we answer your big question. So I'm just gonna introduce today's guest. Um, today's guest, she is Métis and a singer-songwriter from the southernmost part of Canada. She is a fan of the classic novel, Withering Heights, and she is an all-time David Bowie's fan. So welcome, Morgan Panunzio. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Great. Um, so Morgan is also a part of the team that fuels content on the i &E social media channel, so that's Humber Indigenous um, social media channels, and we are really excited to learn from you today. So let's get started. Um, for folks who are not familiar with i &E, which is the Indigenous Education and Engagement Center, um, we call it i &E for short, let's just start with an introduction. So what is i &E? Well, it's a safe space for Indigenous students to get support and find community when they're um, at, in school, I guess, at post-secondary, and it's been a really great uh, place for me uh, to find people and to network um, and just get the supports that I need, so, yeah. For sure. Um, you guys do, you folks do amazing work in creating that safe space for Indigenous students, and you guys do, you folks do a lot of work in, um, making programs and providing resources. So um, can you elaborate more on these programs? What types of programs and resources are available to students who access IE? &E? Yeah, so um, I've been a work study for a little bit and um, during the summer we started, or we, we've done book clubs before, but um, I was heavily involved in the Indigenous Book Club, which is, was a really successful program in the summer, especially due to COVID and people being at home and all that. So that's open to all students and um, it's a, it's a really good program if you want to learn more about Indigenous culture or even just, you know, have a safe space and uh, something fun to do. And that usually runs on Monday nights, bi-weekly during the school year. So, And then there's also a movie night, a movie cafe, actually, it, it, because normally it'd be in person and we'd have, you know, refreshments and whatnot. But we've been doing it online and uh, that happens once a month and we pick a different Indigenous film and have discussion afterwards. So that's a really good program as well, and also open to all students. And then there's a few programs that are just for Indigenous students, like Tea and Bead, um, so that's a women's circle, or Ninawag Night for the men, um, which we do different activities. Uh, I think we're working on doing a mit making workshop for the men's night, and it's just been Tea and Bead for the women lately, so. Yeah. yeah. And, and I also just, as well. yeah. yes, the speaker series. Um, so I understand that you guys, you folks, also partner with um, the base and LG, the LGBTQ plus resource center for getting your speakers. So I just think that's wonderful that you guys, off, you folks, offer. I'm sorry, I keep saying guys, but I need to say folks. Um, you folks offer a, an intersectional approach, um, which means that like it's taking into account multiple facets of people's identities and having discussions based on the complex nature of how they intersect. So I understand that during the summer, there was um, a speaker who was two-spirited and, um, and a part of the Indigenous community. So definitely check those out. What has been your experience with the speaker series? Well, it's just a really great program and uh, we tend to do a lot of LGBTQ plus uh, speaker series um, and uh, a lot of students are also featured on those. So that's also alumni. So it's just a really great uh, program also just to ask questions and um, yeah, just to, I guess, I really like the speaker series. I think it's a great program that we have. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great for understanding different um, perspectives. So where can students stay updated on the events that occur um, with i &E? Yeah, so we do post a lot on Facebook, the Facebook page at Humber Indigenous. That would be the main spot to get all the updates. We also have Instagram. And uh, if you're on the emailing list as well, you can, or just on the Facebook page, there's email contacts to, uh, you know, to sign up for different events and whatnot. So, and we also have IKG coming up uh, at the end of November. So if you want to uh, sign up for some of those workshops and uh, events, that would be 
a really good for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, lots of great programs for um, Indigenous students as well as non-Indigenous students. So it's great that you provide a space for people to get educated or learn about the Indigenous community in ways that are not only educational but also very fun. So I understand you guys also do games nights. Yeah. So be on the lookout for when you when you do these things. Um, we just got a question. Um, what has been your favorite speaker series event and why, Morgan? Um, I really liked the uh, the speaker series event with about sisters and Sage and her sister did a speaker series and that was really great. Um, I just like that one because probably because I know them and uh, and I wanted to support them and I really enjoyed that. But that's just where I was coming from. But I think that all the speaker series have really great value and. Um, my favorite part is always the Q&A at the end where people ask questions and, and it's open for discussion. So I think that's, uh, yeah, it's really a great thing. I'm not sure when our next one is. You have to check the Facebook page, but um, yeah, we've got a couple up and coming events. So yeah, definitely have a look. Yeah. That's great. Um, so you guys, all, you folks also have a ton of resources um, that you provide Indigenous students. So can you talk more about that? Oh yeah, so we definitely have uh, lots of resources if you're looking for scholarship bursary information or job postings um, in the GTA or anything like that. I mean, you can definitely reach out. Um, we also can help you access computers, technology resources, or um, tutoring if you need. Um, and uh, anything relating to the program, you can also email Caitlin, Kevin. Uh, all their emails are on uh, on the Facebook page as well. So yeah we have honestly endless resources if you have a question if you need to be directed to a particular place i always go to <laughs> to the indigenous center first and then usually they will direct me wherever wherever it is you need to go for sure it's yeah very um, going to post-secondary i find um i used to go to york university and going to a larger institution like york um tends to be a lot more intimidating than college but it's still intimidating nonetheless being that there are so many there's just so many places. You don't know what number to call or what person to email. So, yeah. For sure. Um, definitely reach out and check out the Facebook page to get those emails and reach out to whoever you need. And it's so great to see that you are also, you know about these resources and you're a student and you're so active in um, IE&E. &E. So we want to know about your experience with IE&E &E and the community. So what has been your experience personally? Okay. So, um, yeah, I just really wanted to get involved because I also worked at the Indigenous Center at York when I was a student there. So that was pretty much the first thing I did was go straight to the Indigenous Center and um, I wanted to apply to be a work study. Um, in my first semester, they don't let students in the first semester become work studies. It's just a humble policy. So I just got involved a little bit, you know, attending certain events and whatnot, but I, I didn't get super heavily involved until the winter semester of last year and through the summer up until now, but it's just been a really great place like I, where I found some friends and uh, people to connect with. And also um, I've learned things and I've, and I've been involved uh, in so many events. It's just been very enriching in many ways, uh, emotionally, intellectually. <laughs> and, yeah. Excellent opportunity to network and make those connections. Those are absolutely crucial. And these are connections that will stay with you for, you know, for when you're going into professional careers even. Um, it, it's, it's great to know people in the community that can help you. So um, what has been your favorite memory or event that you worked on personally? Well, um, I would have to say working on the Indigenous Transmedia Fellowship over the summer, which I got connected to that posting, and it is technically a work study through Humber, um, through IE&E. Uh, and uh, we basically had an all Indigenous team working on a project. There were five ITF fellows, and we all made an art house film together over the summer. And it was just an all Indigenous film. Um, you can Actually, it's on Humber Galleries if you want to have a look at that. And uh, the link's in the bio, by the way, on Instagram. Um, on the Life at Humber bio, it's it's the first one there. And also, we'll be putting the link in the description of our YouTube video as well. So, yeah, talk more about your experience with the fellowship. But talk more about the film that you guys made, you, fo yeah. you folks made. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, it all started out as we weren't sure what kind of media we were going to go for because we're all media and art students, Indigenous, and uh, I thought maybe we were going to go for a sculpture, a multi multimedia piece because I'm also a visual artist, and, and a lot of people there were in film, so we ended up going with something, and we had a couple music students as well. I'm, I'm actually in music, so right now as a major. So um, we ended up going with an art house film um, called Native Enough, and uh, one day we did this sort of a uh, free writing session, answering questions about how we felt about our Indigenous identity. And then that became sort of the skeleton for the script that became the film afterwards. And we ended up, um, I ended up directing, we all co-wrote, um, and I did the painting as well that's featured in the film. And uh, yeah, we all collaborated, had equal part in it, and Sage as well was the producer. So yeah, it was really great. And then we made it into Nuit Blanche this year. Even though it wasn't shown in person, it, we still made it into Nuit Blanche, which was really great. We also were um, mentored by Dr. Julie Nagam. I don't know if you're familiar, but she's done a lot of things for Nuit Blanche. And it was a really strange full, ex full circle experience because my first time actually going to Nuit Blanche, I went immediately, I looked for the indigenous art. I saw this beautiful art piece um, with these wigwams and it was projections of uh, nature and landscapes and I just loved it so much and I wrote a critical analysis report on it because I was in this art class, um, Art in the City at York and then um, Dr. Julie Nagam was on Facebook or sorry on Zoom <laughs> with us and she started showing us her art and I said oh my goodness that's the first art piece I saw at Nuit Blanche and I loved it so much that I wrote a report on it and, and it was just this strange full circle experience because she ended up sort of mentoring us during that process. Oh that's amazing so she is at Humber right now right? Well no she's not at Humber but uh she just it was a guest. For oh I see yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see you. Um, uh, the, the film was very well made. I checked it out myself and I found it to be very eye-opening and um, I was really touched and moved by the, um, the, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Let me just um, you guys, you folks had a lot of examples of how there have been many misconceptions in the media and it was very eye-opening to see those things. Um, so I definitely encourage um, our viewers to check it out. It's in our Instagram bio. Um, but yeah, definitely reach out to whoever's organizing it and maybe you can take part in it next year. Um, so yeah. that's going to be right yeah. again, uh, the ITF fellowship, because that's the first year we've done an all indigenous fellowship and uh, it was successful. So we will be doing it again if you're interested in that. For sure, for sure. Um, for folks who have just heard about this space, what would you say to, um, what would you say is like the best part that you get out of being involved with i &E? Um, In my opinion, it's a sort of a community or a home away from home. Uh, I really do love the people that work there and uh, it's just an amazing place to feel if you don't, if you feel like you don't belong or you feel that um, you're not, you know, making a ton of friends or anything, like it's just a great, I'm a very introverted person. So it's just a really good opportunity for me to get out there and be social. And uh, yeah, it's just, um, they're so supportive and wonderful and being with like-minded people and um, being able to, you know, talk about things you might not be able to talk with non-Indigenous students about. I mean, it's, it's just great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. And even having the um, events for non-Indigenous people, it's yeah. a great chance to ask questions and learn about um, Indigenous community, especially that we are in Canada. It's such an important part of our history. And um, learning about our history only get, gives us a good picture on what is going on now and how we can remedy the situations now and and tackle issues that are going on now. So I definitely encourage people to get involved in um, even the, the movie houses. You, you have special guests that um, talk with you guys and answer Q&As um, who have worked on these projects. So um, it's definitely an enriching experience and it's all free. So take advantage of this free, amazing education. Um, so for students who are interested in getting involved, how do they do so? 
Well, I was going to also say that our one of our movie cafes that was really successful was the Indian Horse Movie Cafe. We did um, right around Orange Shirt Day because residential schools and that was the theme. So we ended up doing it on the 28th, Orange Shirt Day on the 30th of September. And uh, that was a really good turnout because we actually had people from the film, actors from the film, come on and do a panel um, and a Q&A. So yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's a great thing if you want to get involved, non-Indigenous Absolutely. We, we want everyone to get involved um, because it's just, you know, the more allies, the better. And uh, it's just a really great thing to have these kinds of discussions. And for people who sometimes like they come to the movie cafe or the, or the book club and they say, I had no idea about this or wow, I learned so much. And it's just a really awesome experience because, you know, when you grow up a lot of time, I mean, at least in my generation, um, in grade schools, like, it wasn't, you don't really talk about sort of the nitty-gritty, really important subjects in terms of Indigenous uh, history. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's mainly just um, sort of sugar-coated stuff, and it's, it doesn't really go in depth at all, so I think it's really important for people to, yeah, to get involved. Take advantage of the community that Humber has created, mm -hmm. and knowing that Humber is even a leader in um the workings of creating these events as well i understand that they also like take a lot in mind of um like what the students are going through and trying to accommodate students as best that they can um i also hear that there are a lot more indigenous professors that are being hired and humber's doing a good job to diversify so um yeah well, what are your experiences with um like with that <laughs> well i mean i think it's a, it's an amazing an amazing thing uh, that we have been hiring a lot more uh, Métis, but also in Indigenous in general, uh, people onto the faculty and staff. I've just been noticing like a lot of people getting hired um, that are Indigenous. And that kind of representation is more powerful than anything. It's so important to have that. Um, you know, even just having one Indigenous professor that's already significant, but having more than one, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. I think it's, it's great. And, um, oh, what was the other thing about, was it about, uh, <laughs> what was it? You said something else about, not about the, the staff, but something else. Um, oh, uh, about, um, resources that they provide during these events. Right, right, right. right. So, um, during, say, the movie cafes, if we're talking, if we're discussing difficult subject matter, for example, we'll always have mental health supports. Um, just, you know, their emails and people t from the actual, the, um, what do you call it? The center, uh, um, second floor of the Welcome Center. I don't know what it's called. I forget. But, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> the LRC, people, right? Yes, the LRC. A couple uh, representatives from there to, you know, help if there's any sort of mental health resource needed during those, you know, difficult the difficult subject matter that's being handled. So we're very conscious of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, so I think it's also important to acknowledge that this week is Treaties Week. So um, definitely take this time to uh, check out their Facebook page. We also have um, some content coming out at Life at Humber um, talking about Treaties Week and answering um, like maybe difficult questions around Treaties Week. So, um, Morgan, can you just give us a brief on what Treaties Week is? I know that it's a really big topic, but maybe just scratch the surface and then students can um, do research after this live. Well, I would just say, you know, it's a really good opportunity. We're not doing any events sort of connected to Treaties Week necessarily, but it's a really good opportunity to um, acknowledge uh, the history and to, to do some research, I guess. Uh, it's... Um, it's one of those things where I feel like every day should be <laughs> Treaties Day, but um, yeah, have a week dedicated to it. It raises awareness and lets people sort of do some research. I think it's great. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah, uh, definitely stay tuned for content at Life at Humber that talks more about Treaties Week. And thank you so much, Morgan, for going live with us. Do you have any additional comments or um, words of wisdom for folks watching? Well, I would just say that don't be afraid to get involved. Don't be afraid to ask questions and to honestly, I mean, we're not in person, so can't really walk into the center and just uh, sort of arrive anytime. But um, just don't be afraid to reach out and get involved because um, 
you will not regret it. Everyone is so nice and supportive, I guarantee. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if you just attend the uh, movie cafes or the book club, like a little really does go such a long way. And it's important information to move forward and progress. So um, definitely, t especially living in Canada, it's so important to understand the history of Canada um, and like the, how like the indigenous community has really just been the fundamental shaping factor of how Canada is today. So um, thank you so much, Morgan, for going live with us. Um, I'll take a few questions. If you have any, just leave it, any, leave it in the comments. Um, but with that said, um, we're gonna be wrapping up our We Got You Live. Um, and definitely, if you have just joined now, we post the lives directly to our IGTV, so you can watch the whole thing right after we are finished here. And we also post it to our YouTube channel. So, um, thank you, Morgan. And any additional comments? No, I think we're good. All right, Morgan. All right, we're going to wrap it up. So thank you for joining and stay safe out there and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.